This is black sand. This is a 1,000 pound magnet. I'm gonna see if this magnet will help me recover gold out of the black sand. Magnets, oh! Welcome back to the Glacial Gold Hunter. We're back at Lake Superior looking for the beach gold that's here. And it's right there in the black sand. Now not all black sand has gold, but occasionally that gold accumulates with the black sand. Now the black sand is composed dominantly of iron oxide minerals. A lot of magnetite and hematite. The magnetite sticks to the magnet really well. And because this is so fine and dense, it can be really difficult to separate this from the gold. And every time I make a beach mining video, I get a million comments on, why don't you use a magnet? So today we're gonna use magnets. Now a lot of times miners will use a magnet like this, where you can pick up the black sand and then there's this little trigger that lets it release. And the sand has to be either completely dry or completely wet for this to work. Because if you pick up the black sand when it's kind of clumpy like that, you're just picking up the gold with it. You're not actually separating it. So let's take a scoop, get it wet, and extract the magnetics. We'll get this all wet, completely wet. Stratify it a bit. And then we'll use our magnet. Look at it, it pulls all that material out there. And I'm gonna put all this in another pan just to check to see if we're tearing up any gold. So I'll stratify it again. Just tons and tons of metallics. Every time you do it, there's enough metallics to just fill that magnet. But there's getting to be a lot less. So now let's pan that down and see if it's any easier. There's still tons and tons of heavy material in there. Hematite has a slight magnetism. It's harder to extract. Magnetite's really strong. That'll suck right out of there. And garnets, they're very heavy and they accumulate here too. You'll see this red tint to the, to the sediment. Those are all garnets. This is all still really black material. But it's not as magnetic. There's still some magnetics, but this is a lot less magnetite coming out on that magnet. So you still have to fight with a ton of black sand. There's still just tons of heavy black sand, even with using that magnet. And we got good gold in there too. And just tossing it back really quick, you can see there's a number of specks there, and there's even specks over here. I'm just doing it quick to show, but you can see there's a lot of black sand left that the magnet doesn't necessarily pick up. See that? Heavy black sand, but the magnet's really not getting it out of there. Now let's test the heavies that we sucked out of there with a magnet and see if we sucked any gold along with it. This is really, really heavy. Like 100% magnetite. And I don't see any specks of gold, so I think we did extract the magnetite properly. Now if I take the magnet and draw it through this blonde sand, you can see it's still full of magnetite. A lot of black sand mixed in with the blonde sand. And there might be gold mixed in with this too, but the gold would be like parts per billion, just tiny disseminated specks, it would never be worth panning this, even though you might find the occasional speck. But in certain sections of the beach, the wave action is just such that there's enough energy to kind of strip away the light quartz sand, but it's not enough to strip away this heavy black magnetite. So the gold will accumulate with the black sand. And instead of parts per billion, it might be parts per million. You know, depends on the spot. So you go through a million grains of sand, and there might be one grain of gold. Where'd you get these numbers? I made them all up. But because there's not as big of a density differential between the magnetite and the gold, it's just a lot harder to extract the gold from this black sand. But maybe we just need to use a bigger magnet. Now this is a magnet fishing magnet and it weighs a thousand pounds. I'm really strong. No, it's rated to hold a thousand pounds. It can pull something a thousand pounds. So it's really powerful. So I figured this will be an easy way to suck all that magnetite out of the sand all at once. And maybe it'll make it a little easier to pan that gold out. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill a bucket partially full of this black sand. And then we're gonna bucket swirl it. Get all these little gravels out of here. When I swirl it like this, all the little sand particles kind of get suspended in the water. So now I take my magnet, it should be sucking all the magnetite particles towards the magnet and leaving behind the gold at the bottom of the bucket. See, look at all that, it's just packed. I'll just wipe that off. Go again. This really isn't a fast endeavor. I was hoping this thousand pound magnet might make quick work of it. There's just a lot of magnetics in there. It makes sense that if I lower the magnet lower down to the slurry, it takes more of them out quicker. Because they're not going to come to the top of the bucket, just like the gold isn't going to come to the top of the bucket. Look at all that. So, I've reduced that bucket quite a bit. Most of the magnetics are out of there. They're definitely not all out, but I could think I could spend all day with that magnet and still pull magnetics out, I'm sure. So let's see how easy this is to pan now. And there's what we got out of that. A good number of specks. So even with the aid of magnets, this black sand is a whole different beast. The magnets are just another step to go through. It takes more time, so you're processing less material. And the reason why people don't really use them that much is because you kind of just get used to processing the material as it is. And you're not going to get all the gold. You're going to lose specks. And it's going to be a challenge but you'll probably end up with more just processing the material as it is than going through all the time-consuming steps of trying to extract the magnetics. That's my opinion. That's what other people have told me, but you keep commenting about it, so I figured I would show you an example of using magnetics on the black sand. So with that, the next thing I'm gonna do is just start processing material and collecting some gold. Now you've seen me use the patea pan before, and I've modified it just a little bit. Oh great, another idea. I just took a little piece of this carpet and this is just a free sample that I got from Menards. You can see there's a lot of open spaces there, but I'm hoping that that'll let the gold like settle in and get trapped. When you're swirling this around, there tends to get to be a, about a baseball or softball sized mass of black sand that's kind of hard to move. And it gets to the point where it's just too much work to get it to ride out of the lip when you're swirling it. And you're, I, I know I'm dumping gold out as I do that. So one thing you can do is you can pan it like normal, but then I've also seen gold just go shooting right off the edge. So what I'm gonna try to do with this is as I swirl it down, It'll, it'll go down to that softball size mass and then potentially I'll be able to use this as like a sluice and all the gold will just get trapped in there. That's my theory, let's test it. I tell you right now, that mat impedes the swirl like completely, completely stops it. This should be like swirling evenly along the bottom of the pan and it's just a block. All right, so swirling it is no longer an option. I've killed the swirl. So I'm just gonna shake it out, I don't know. We'll see if anything gets stuck in that mat. Well, now I've got a carpet glued to my pan. I don't know how to get the material out of it. I do see gold, that's good. We'll see what that caught. And that's what I got out of my carpet patea pan. Now, I could probably run through about four or five pans like that and the time it took me to fiddle with the magnetics and trying to extract them. And then you still have to pan it out. So it's just another example of you want to just process material and then worry about magnetics maybe when you're at home. But when you're on the beach, 
Just gotta get as much concentrates as you can. And panning it all down to show it on the film takes a long time. So I'm gonna stop doing that. I'm just gonna pan it down to my concentrate, put it in my concentrate bucket, and keep on going. Now it can be really tempting to want to see how much gold is in there, how much it captured. But I'm just going to dump it in my concentrate pail and on to the next one. Now when you're mining, it's important to take frequent breaks. And especially out on the lake shore, there's a lot of cool rocks to find. And every rock tells a story. So let's see what stories we can find today. Here's one with a great story. Now with the trained eye, you can tell right away that this is igneous rock. It's a porphyritic igneous rock. All these little bumps in there, those different colored nodules, those are individual crystals. So when this was a magma plume coming up, it was like a, like a crystal mush, kind of like a slushy. These are all crystals of feldspar. Then the magma body cooled, crystallizing it further so it was hard and brittle. Then it fractured. You can see right here, this veining, it fractured, and then that's a quartz vein that infilled it. Then it fractured again, and this quartz vein actually faulted. So you have a little mini fault there, and then more infilling that came in at a different time. So cross-cutting relations, you had your magma, it solidified, it faulted, infilled, and then faulted again and infilled. That's an amazing story. Every rock tells a story. So after using this a bit more, what I realized is I basically just built a standard pan, but instead of riffles, it's carpet. So it's like a, a carpet riffled pan, and it catches gold, but I don't think any better than anything else. It was worth a try, but now it's glued in there with shoe goo. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. Here's a little trick for setting up a bucket chair in the water. You can't just put it down because it floats away. You just scoop, flip. Now it'll stay. This whole column's full of water. So now there's enough weight to keep it from floating away. So I've been panning, using different methods, trying new things, but today I've been sticking with just your basic traditional pan. And the water's so calm, I don't need to set up a tote or anything. Just a bucket in the lake, and I can pan right here. Super nice. The patea pan is fun. The banjo pan is great. Sometimes I just like the traditional pan. Just depends on the day. I mean, I brought all three, and I've been using all three, but for the most part, I've just been sticking with this one. And it works. And I've been really trying to focus on getting it down so I take home less cons. That's tricky for me. I saw when Jason was here, he pans it really fast, and he goes home with not a lot of cons in this bucket. Now, Jason gave me some lessons on how to clean it up better, and I've been trying to use that but I'm still not a master of it. I still got a lot of practicing to do. So I'm still gonna have a lot of concentrates today. That's okay, but it's something I'm working on. Panning gold is so simple that you could probably capture gold in an old shoe if you wanted to, but there's definitely an art to it. There's a lot of skill that goes into being a good panner. Hopefully someday I'll be one. And I'll show you how much it caught. And it does catch that gold. All that was stuck in the carpet, so it definitely works. I don't think I'm gonna patent it at all though. Anyone out there know how to unglue shoe goo? All right, the waves are picking up and it's starting to hit the bucket and splash up into the nether regions. It's gonna look like I peed my pants. I just pissed in my pants and nobody can do anything about it. So I think that's about it for me. Got a lot less cons than the last time I was here but hopefully there's just as much gold. We'll see. Let's pack things up, head on home, and clean it up.
All right, we're back home and we still got a lot of concentrates to clean through, but a lot less than the last bucket of beach sand I cleaned through. So hopefully it's a little bit richer and I just didn't do less material, but we'll see. And today I got this small six inch VDR mat that I wanna try. I've never used this on the black sand and I like experimenting, so we'll see how this works. Put a pinch on there, see what that looks like. First scoop filled up the riffles, but down farther, they're not full. So, what does that mean? Got the little swirls swirling and the drop riffles riffling. All kinds of pieces of gold right there, so it looks like it was doing its job pretty well. Look at all that. <laughs> that gold likes to stick to it though. That's why it catches it so good, it's sticky. Still gold stuck to it. So now because I know you never catch all the gold the first time around, especially with this black sand, I'm gonna run it again. This time I'm gonna use my low V mat. We know that works pretty well. And the second run does show some specks there that I didn't catch the first time. I could probably run it a third time and still catch more specks. This is that material from the second run and I think I'm gonna pan it out using my special backwashing technique. Let's see if we can see how much is in there. So there's what I caught in my low V mat after running it through the VDR mat. And there's probably still more in that bucket, but is it worth it? How many times do you run it before you're done? Now, in theory, there should be a lot higher concentration of gold in this stuff. And I certainly could pan this down, but it takes a long time. And I have the luxury of having a cleanup sluice, so I'm gonna use my cleanup sluice. And I use the Flower Gold Wizard cleanup sluice. It's a clever design made specially for this fine flower gold that we find around here in the Midwest. Put a catch pan in there so we can test our tailings and start scooping. First scoop, it's already loading up with gold. So that's super quick. I set the sluice off to the side and just for the sake of testing, let's go through the tailings and see if we can see how much we missed. Probably missed something. And there are a number of specks that got through. These specks are so small and flat, they're like gold leaf. So that tells me I need a little lighter hand when I feed the thing. It'll catch those pieces, but not if you choke it full of material. So light-handed, that's the lesson. All right, so here's the main event. My cleanup sluice is dumped in here. Let's pan that back and see the grand finale. And there it is, all cleaned up. Millions of little specks. Well, I don't think we set any records for the day, but I got a friend out there, Jim. He says he goes out and he tries to find four specks any more than four specs and he's doing pretty good. I think we got more than four specs. So I'd say we got a pretty good bonus here today. Let's see if we got enough to weigh. 0 0.030. As always, beach mining is tons of fun. I didn't have the best luck with the magnet today and I don't see other people using magnets out there. I think it's best to just process the material even though it's super difficult. But if you disagree, you're more than welcome to make your opinion known in the comments, but I'd recommend going to the beach and proving me wrong first. Regardless though, this vial's a little bit closer to full. Thank you guys for watching. Come on back for the next one. Bye-bye.